Whoa, man, that was crazy. Like this software just bugged out, gave me the error 42949 which is negative one, as anybody knows. And then, it, and then I started it again and did all this crazy stuff. I had to start it like three times. I've never seen any of the error messages it's ever showed like that before. That was crazy. But I think we're back. Talking about playing games, they just released Battle Chasers. Cool, man. What's what's this one? Yeah, me too. I've got so many games on Steam. Gosh, is, is that... I bet you that's a common thing. Right? All of us game lovers, game creators, we have so many games that are just sitting in our libraries, not even be played yet. I bet you there's a statistic for that somewhere. Yeah, Halloween sales coming. I plan on having Songbringer on sale for that. Sweet, look at this. So good, man. Yeah, Cuphead, right? That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I wish I could say it would be different for me, but it's not. Definitely not. Well, this, did this come out today? Wow, they already got a DLC. Okay, so area patterns. Pattern, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is what gives it its wall, wall edges. Yeah, you have 93 games. Programming is your core outlet. That's so cool, man. I love it. Gully, what language are you programming in right now? Yes, right, Songbringer is, is one of them. Sitting in the library. I hear ya. I totally hear ya. I have so many games I that I I like and I haven't just haven't even finished either. Like Rain World and Owlboy, you know, I haven't finished either of those because I just haven't had time. I haven't made the time because I'm working on the game mostly. Okay, so let's see if the walls are correct now. Good, okay, we got regular walls. Nice. Um, what does the map say for this area? Oh, it's not showing me the map because I'm down here. I need to see the maze. Hmm. So I need to confirm that this maze is actually create. It's creating this the right maze shape here. C sharp, nice. And C plus plus. Cool. Nice. Arduino's implementation of C. I wonder how that's different than regular C. Cool, man. I like it. I like the languages you're working with. Right, yeah, you do. You gotta be in the mood. Yeah, totally, totally. What, um, what multiplayer games do you play then with friends? Okay, what's a good way to see the shape of this? Mm, I 
think it's probably create maze -y. creates a maze and the maze gets generated with a certain shape and that's in maze gen something mm. Yeah, final, oh, the new Final Fantasy where it's like a total, it's like totally MMO, right? Golf with friends, Rocket League, cool. What's PUBG? Oh, oh, player unknowns battlegrounds. Right, okay. Doesn't it? I highly agree. Game making is a It's one of those things that forces you to be efficient as a programmer. Oh, oh, the NPC party? Oh, okay. Nice joke, I like it. Nice. There's this one thing where it does this certain shape. This is the overworld. Where does it do that shape thing? Oh, here it is, great. Plus sign for the ship. Upside down T for some caves. Here it is, single vertical room. All right, so if the Z is, what's the Z in this function here? Maze generate. I don't know what. Oh, this might not even know it's Z. Okay, we'll just say if size Y is greater than zero, set a breakpoint here. Just make sure that this is being created with the right opening. So there should be openings to the north, openings to the south. Got a little breakpoint set here, so I can check when it gets here. What I'm going to look for is the right Z level. I know this this area here is negative 32 for a Z, so let's see what this is. Create May Z. Its Z is negative one. Okay, so we're going to get a lot of these. Oh, whoops! It's supposed to be size Y greater than one to properly catch the areas we're looking for. All right, what's Z? This one's negative eight, which is, what is that? Oh, that's the, uh, this is an underground entrance. All these next ones are going to be underground entrances, probably. Negative 10, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna skip straight to it if Z is negative 32.
I can undo this breakpoint first and then re-enable it once I got this next thing here where this catch this first breakpoint. Okay, caught that. Get here. This should be still inside these functions. Good. Z negative 32. Great. Okay, we're there. Now the size y should be like 3. Mm -hmm. y equals 0. y is less than size y. Set opening 0. Where are all these? Oh, x, y, south, west, north, east. So at 0, 0, we've got south, false, north, true. I guess north, true, yeah. All right, next one, y1. We've got south true, north true. Good. Okay. This math is uh, this is working out. It's kind of a a burdensome way to check this. I guess I could have checked a map somewhere, but there are no maps that are printed for this area, so maybe it's, it, this is the easiest way to double check this. Okay, and then the third room x zero y two. We've got south true, but north is false. Good. We're centering all the openings to the south. Okay, that's correct. Can live with that. It's verified. Sure, of course. Yes, send away. I'd love that. Okay, now, um, I guess basically just area um, patterns. This right here is going to be blocking off the top. Which is probably just this section right here. Let's comment that line out. Nice, man. That's perfect. Twitter messages I check. Twitch messages I'm bad at. I'm pretty bad at Twitch. So if anybody's messaged me on Twitch, I apologize. I just really do not check my messages there. But Twitter, I'm on all the time. Same with email. Okay, good. So there's um, the wall is gone now, but I want to create um, some kind of pathway in the middle and keep the wall, but take away the center part. So A, W2. This is going to be K tile, none. And then for the part that's sky here in the middle, after it draws the sky, we'll draw some sky, sky, what are these? Autocomplete's not working. This is something I really got to, I need to spend some time on my Vim. RC and figure out the things that are fr still frustrating me. Like I love my fuzzy finder. I love, there's so much stuff I love about all my VIM setup. Mostly it works, but really the, the one part that's kind of the weak link is the autocomplete. It's still a lot better than Xcode's autocomplete, a lot faster, but sometimes it just doesn't work. It's weird. I'm using something called you complete me 
And I've heard that Clang Complete is actually better. I forgot what I was doing. All right, Sky, it's Sky Bridge Rise. I think it's, that's what those are called. That's romantic. <laughs> Nice, cool. So we got some, let's turn off all this debug info. That's really what I wanted to see. It's just this bridge rises. This might become a secret at some point, but I kind of, oh, that's cool. I guess it's already risen now. Yeah, something like this. This will probably become some kind of door right here. But this is the gist, right? You come up into this room, you fight a bunch of enemies, it unlocks your way up this way. And then this is something special where you get an item ability so let's see that bridge rise again how does that look without the debug this also could be a, a secret right like these could just be secret blocks so you could walk across here or you have to have faith you just like walk out here in the middle of nothing but I think I'd rather have it be obvious at first So, this area is going to be 0, 1, negative 32. We're going to start there in the middle of this. So, now it's time to make enemies come in waves. So, this is the, this is the part right here where this is, the, um, this is the crux. This is what I wanted to accomplish on today's stream, was just having enemies come in in waves. Like, either they come from off screen... Yeah, actually coming from off screen would be the way to do it. So. I guess the first thing to do would be to create a faux pattern. is something that kind of belongs on the overworld. I'll just put it up here with the overworld stuff. Um, Let's just put some regular blobs here for a second and see if this even works to add a faux pa Oh man, I wonder if this is gonna change anything. No, because the Z is negative 32, it's not gonna be used for other, it's not gonna be one of the choices for other areas. So it should not change any of the existing faux patterns in a world. I'm wondering if I spelled that right. Yep, 
Yeah, yeah, zero ship interior. Hmm, I wonder why this didn't trigger. All right. Or did it? Did it trigger, but somehow... Let's just run it one more time. Z should be negative. Oh, maybe you can't target Z's. Like that. That's the first thing to check. If I delete that part. Hmm, okay, it's not even targeting it there. Hmm. No enemies. All right, well... Oh, wait a minute. It's creating a maze -y, so maybe that's why. Okay, here it is. I forgot there was a do foes flag. Hmm. Okay, we need another breakpoint. If C is negative 32. We'll figure out why it's not using it. Nice, you got a Songbringer badge already. I hope you got a... You got the Rock badge. Right on. Cool, man. That's the first one. I got the Rock badge, too. You can now use this, the sword. Sweet, you got 90% off Ninja Stealth, too? I don't even know what that is. It means you rocks. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. All right, we got position zero, zero. You're not a jibber jabber. Jib is one of the one of the badges. Jib's got, Jib's like, Jib's the foil badge. You gotta get all five, no, six badge levels to get Jib's foil badge. So the Jib one is prestigious. If you get the Jib badge, you're like, you're like movie star. <laughs> that's only a 72 sick game. Thanks, thanks, Steam. Thanks a lot. All right, here is the the one in question. We got two foes. True. All right, so at least it's getting there. It's adding the foes. Get the difficulty. <laughs> They're almost paying you. Ah. Uh, if only Steam did that, right? Paid us to play the games. Oh, there. That's the problem. Oh, okay. All right. So... There's another case 
where it should be allowed to have foes. <laughs> Please help us spend all these keys. Definitely. There's a lot of it. Yeah. P Z equals K first. Uh, let's do this in Vim. Right? Where was that? There we go. Let's make this a little bit more, more better. So that's, I think, first interest the, the area dot pattern minus k pattern zero ship interior two. Okay, this really needs to be verified. I just need to look at that number and make sure that's right. Should be negative 32. Negative 73. The heck? Why would I want to tweet something from Xcode's from inspecting a variable in debug in Xcode? Or why would anything in my code be a Twitter username? This is a really weird feature. I've never seen this before of Xcode. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, pa it's pattern. Oh no, this is pattern minus bell. Try it. Oh man, I just stopped it. I should I should have tweeted it. I should have tweeted the word K first interest Z. Everybody be like, yeah, man, I feel ya. First interest Z. All right. This is Vel. Damn, I really need that autocomplete working right now. Yeah, Vel Overworld. 
Pattern minus Vel Overworld. That should give you like an offset, and, and then this should be should be right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't. Oh my god, I got a way better idea. Jeez. Just to check the pattern. So if the area dot pattern is not equal to pattern zero ship interior two. So that, that pattern can have some enemies on it. That's really all that matters here by changing this little bit of code. Basically just adding one little expression Just allow it to have foes. Damn it, we still have no foes. Oh, has the pattern been set yet? Yeah, okay, it's already got its pattern. Okay, what, what gives? Well, all I want is some enemies. Great, we got this breakpoint. That's proving that indeed this pattern is here. Maybe it's just not matching the pattern now. For example, area, yeah, it's, it's right Z, right pattern. Oh, these are and statements. Oh. No wonder. What's up, feared killer? Hello, thank you. Cheers, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so I just split those into two statements because this part right here is, needs to be grouped together. It's checking if it's not a level and not an underground entrance. Cool, man. Nice. What you what you learning?
Okay, so we're done with that. Well, hopefully this works now. Come on, give me some, give me some freaking enemies on here. Need some enemies. Need some challenge in my life. Oh, there we go. Cool. Yay! We got blobbies. True life is too peaceful. And right then, it finally works. A lot, hopefully? Cool, man. The game's come along great. It's nice to have it all released now. I'll just be working on this first update here with these two new sword abilities, the parry and the charged attack. And also there's going to be a new armor item. And there's going to be at least one new boss. And this room here where you get to fight these waves of enemies or bosses or both. Okay, let's see if we can get the faux entrance B. Oh, that's right. The skeleton went that too. That's a big part of this. Uh, that's already part of the Steam version. And I think even the Xbox and PlayStation versions already have that too. Where you... Uh, don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, the courage skeletons, that's kind of a big thing. Well, it is for people to die a lot, which is a lot, a lot of people do die a lot in this game. It's not, it's not easy. I do too, man. I think it can kind of maybe take off a little bit more than it has by uh, doing some updates and sales. You know what I mean? Once it goes on, there's a, like, it's got a lot of people wishlisting Songbringer. Which makes me think that maybe the price was a little too expensive. You know, 20 bucks is on the higher end of indie games. And, you know what I mean? It might have just been too expensive for a lot of people to buy right away. But if, but a lot of people wishlisted it, that's for sure. It's got like, it's got a significant amount of wish lists. So, I think when it goes on sale for the first time, it's going to get a good bump. And when it goes on sale the next time, it'll get a new, another bump and stuff like that. So, I hope so too. So far, Songbringer is enough. It's enough to make the next game, which is really all you can ask for, I guess, in game development. You know, I'm, ex I'm excited to make the next game. I'm not quite ready to make the next game. I'll definitely need some, you know, I need to finish Songbringer here, and then I need a little bit of a break, maybe a month, just take off a month, and then start on the next one. Yeah, people are buying everything that's coming out on the Switch. Is that the trend right now? Is that why things are a little bit different? It feels like on Steam to me, people like... I don't know, there's like there's something different lately. Even this summer. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I Probably not. There probably will not be any Songbringer on Switch. It's expensive and it just never got in... You know, it never was part of the plan because it was, it just finally came out, you know, the Switch came out this year and they were really stingy on giving out kits, stuff like that. You think in general people are scared before they actually play a game like this? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. And I think a lot of gamers today have a big, um, a big red flag or like a warning with games that are procedural and so songbringer is procedural you know and there are times when songbringer is a little more difficult than it's supposed to be you know because it's so per it's so permissive and procedural that it allows you to get in the you know sometimes there are harder rooms than there should be 
So I think that procedural thing scares a lot of people off. Rocket Bunny, what's up, man? You watched a GDC talk a few days ago, and a guy was talking about all of his games and how most of them took a long time to really reach their prime. Really? I would love to see that. Do you happen to remember what that talk was named? That would be really encouraging to watch something like that right now. Nice, man. Rocket Bunny, how you been, man? Okay, let's see if this works. If I add this entrance B flag. Yeah, I think I saw that one too. I think I watched that. It was about their development process, right? How they like they changed a lot over the years, changed their art style, and they were talking. I, I, pretty, I watched one of those from those guys. Oh, so something happened here. Though I think the foes couldn't even get in. They're like, ah, oh, there's nowhere to. Yeah. Oh, they have two of them. Oh, okay. Been treating you nicely? Cool, man. Yeah. Life's good. Life's good. So are you still in Portland? Rocket Bunny, how you liking it, man? So I think what happened with this entrance B is that all those blobs were just sitting off of off screen and they couldn't get on somehow. That's my theory. Let's back up that theory by looking zooming out a little bit. There's this little trick where I can zoom the camera lens out a bit. And it, it'll reveal what's off the screen. Here we go. Just change this to true. This will just increase the height of the camera. Yeah, it does, right? Oregon gets warm in the summer. Where I'm from in southern Oregon, in Medford, it would be like 105 degrees in the summer almost every day. At least at least 95, you know, if not 100. That's like over 30 in Celsius, I know that, right? I think it's over 30. But anyways, it does get hot in Oregon in the summer. I'm glad you're liking it though, man. I remember you weren't liking Seattle as much. So I'm glad you're in, I'm glad you're liking it in Portland. Nice, man. Found it. Sweet. Cool. Really appreciate that, Dami. I'm going to check this out. All right, let's see if this, um, if we get the zoomed out camera, if we can see that there's some enemies off screen waiting to come on screen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think they're I think what's happening is they're just stuck off screen. But this didn't really help with the zoom out. Yes, I mean, uh, I was just talking about that, but yeah, in in general it's doing okay. Yeah, I mean pr the press it got so much press. Lots of press, almost too much press really. You know, like um, it got an average Metacritic score for certain reasons. A lot of it was a lot of procedural stuff. People are not that. People are pretty divided on their on their opinions about procedural, especially the press. You know, they they either hate it, they hate procedural, or they love it. And so it takes a really it takes a certain kind of person to love Songbringer. But the people that do play Songbringer freaking really love it. Like, it's got a lot of positive comments on Steam. Um, and it's just, it suits the right kind of person really well, I think. And then everybody else, it maybe doesn't suit as well, you know. If you're into Zelda games, you probably will enjoy it. You'll probably think it's good. But it, it's only great to a, 
to the certain kind of person, I think, you know, and then to the hater, of course, all haters are just going to hate. So, but yeah, it's going okay. And, um, it will be enough to make the next game. You know what I mean? Barely, but <laughs> it'll probably be enough to make the next game. Let's just put it that way. So after finishing Songbringer, these next few updates, I'm probably going to take like a month off and then start the next one, you know? I'm excited to take these characters to another place. Okay, these these foes that start off the screen, they use this thing called mood off screen. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I do. Um, it will probably be from another character's perspective, which is probably going to be Jib. So you're gonna you're basically gonna play the next game from from Jib's eyes. So you'll have all these different abilities and stuff, and it will be a totally different character. No, I am not gonna start from scratch. Um, I've built a lot of really cool reusable components with Songbringer, um, and I'll be using a lot of that. So a lot of the systems, especially especially all the components, you know what I mean? Check out. I mean, this, there's like so many source files that are components like name component move component position component all these things are really simple individual things that can easily be used in the next game and then a lot of stuff is very very specific to songbringer like the systems basically you know input system is a lot of the abilities and items you use in songbringer a lot of that will have to get rewritten. So some things can be reused. I'm guessing maybe 30 to 40% of the code can be reused, which is a lot. That's like 30 to 40,000 lines of code, which could save me a whole year practically. You know what I mean? And that's actually my goal too. I would love to make the next game in say two years instead of three faster if possible. And I'm actually considering, I would like to get you guys' feedback on this right now, if you got if you got some feedback. But I'm considering making the next game not procedural. So um it would be it would be the same it would probably be the yeah, it's gonna be probably the same kind of game, like a top, you know, a top-down three-quarter perspective action RPG, but totally different items and abilities, and probably not procedural. That's the part I'm 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 on the fence about this. Like song you could say Songbringer's greatest strength is its procedural, but it's also kind of its greatest weakness, you know what I mean? In the sense that it can create these random situations that are not always I guess you could say not always well designed, you know? It's like shit, there's a room that's super duper difficult right there in this particular world and it makes some players frustrated, you know? You think it's a smart idea for going for going no procedural? I think it, the one thing about if I make the next game not procedural, um, it will save a shitload of time. Yeah, you're thinking you know stronger narrative, right? Right, that too. Yeah, could put, focus more on the the actual song bringer part. Which really didn't get that much focus in this in the first Songbringer game, the partying part at least, and exploring space and all that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, Rocket Bunny, you got some good points here. I can. If I focus on making a game that's not procedural, I can make sure that every single area is well designed. So I think that would. I think it would make for a better a better playing game actually, you know. You yeah, you love procedural. I I hear you, man. And I really did enjoy making Songbringer procedural. I think Songbringer stands on its own as a you know, a decent procedural title. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. That'll be something I need to focus on a little bit too in the next one like it is gorgeous art, and a lot of people have said that, but also it can get a little busy. 
So if anything with the artwork, all I got to do with the next one is just really focus on making it a little more simple, you know, just like better contrast between things, less, less busyness. Yeah, you could hand polish literally every area, spend more time blinging them out. Yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea, Rocket Bunny. Maybe the music could be procedural or even more procedural than it is in this one. That's a great suggestion, Rocket Bunny. Yeah, it depends on the style, right? Story building, plot twists, yeah. I definitely want to make the next one have a story that's I guess I just kind of wrote I feel like I wrote kind of a dumb story for the for this first one with Songbringer or at least the main character Rock is kind of a dumb airhead rock star kind of character that a lot of people don't really relate to. I don't know. I don't think it I don't think this the story was one of Songbringer's strengths. Except towards the end. The end of Songbringer's story was kinda cool, but most people never played that far, you know? Yeah, something different. Yeah. Yeah, it's totally hard. It's a hard balance there. I'm I like I'm glad Songbringer was procedural. I n I've this is that it's this is my dream game, you know. This is like I I've always wanted to play a procedural Zelda. Right, yeah, yeah, the yeah, to that character. So that's that's a good thing, you know, because the next game will basically be from Jib's eyes. Jib is kind of more of a, I think, more of a mature character to work with, and it could make for better dialogue. Oh, and he's also kind of part part robot or part android, you know, so like he can, you can kind of get away with making more mechanical dialogue for him and that would work. Yeah, more focus on puzzle solving could be a good thing too. And that, that is something that is incredibly hard to do in a procedural game. So if I made this next one not procedural, I could, I could much more easily make puzzles, you know. Because I had to make these puzzles that kind of worked in any situation for Songbringer. So it kind of made for these, you know, somewhat easy puzzles. Really easy to figure out. So yeah, there could be... And another thing about um, non-procedural games is you can make these... Like Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit, he calls it the uh, the puzzle box type of dungeon. Where the whole dungeon changes, you know based on certain things you do the whole dungeon shifts or the floors move and things like that so the whole thing is like this big puzzle box and that is that is super difficult to do with a procedural game but much easier to do with a not procedural game where everything is completely bespoke so uh, i should also mention during this conversation that if anyone is watching this on youtube send me your thoughts you know, email me, I'm nat at wizardfoo.com, or tweet me, or whatever. Get in touch with me, let me know your thoughts. Should the next game I make be procedural? Should it be non-procedural? Pros, cons, what do you think? Share with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Right, maybe not completely doing away with it, maybe just transfer it into other mechanics. Right, like enemies and items and abilities, yeah! I like that gully. There could be some really cool stuff with some procedural elements. Corral rock. Yeah. The path blocking puzzle style. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, this is a super cool idea. Thanks, you guys, this is great. Thanks for all these great thoughts. Yeah, right? It, this could be really interesting with Jib as the main character. Because he's... He can do, like, he can do sort of 
you know, computery things, <laughs> robot-y things. Yeah, this could totally this could totally be pretty easy to do actually if you think about it. I couldn't I would have to write one AI, but I could mishmash art or or even procedurally generate art. And also I I really like the way that um I love the way that Rain World did their um procedural animation where every bit of the characters was a little bit of a blob. And that way, char characters look so organic and amazing in Rain World. I'd like to do that for, for the next game, like do some procedural animation. Or procedural quests. Interesting, interesting. Good idea. That's true, Gully. That's true. And that's another example of Songbringer's greatest strength and also its greatest weakness. Right? I wrote this game that's supposed to be really friendly for speedrunners, but it's really only friendly if you play the same world. You know? You gotta get to know that world. Which I guess I guess it's not too much of a downfall, because if you're a speedrunner playing Songbringer, you're just gonna play the world the one world that you, you wanna get good at. Generate a different plot, yeah, yeah. I hear ya. You're trying to do it yourself too? I saw um I saw uh, Ben Porter from the guy that's making uh, Moon Man. He was researching that a while ago. Um, y there is there is a lot of stuff about procedurally generated um, narrative, and it's <laughs> I I saw some output from some neural network or something like that that was supposed to generate prose, and it was really basic. It was really kind of horrible actually, but. I think if you thought about it enough, you could definitely create something that could create some kind of procedurally generated plot, if not, or maybe just sort of randomly arranged plot, maybe. I don't know. Audio puzzles. Oh, right. That's cool. Yeah. I like that. Audio puzzles. I haven't seen that section of The Witness. I'll have to go watch another playthrough of it I watched a I watched a speed run of it once and I don't remember that audio puzzle oh wait no now I do now I do yeah I remember that part yeah audio puzzles are also another example of something that would be better with non-procedural I think oh he did oh that's cool I love Tom Coxon He's a really friendly guy, too. Thanks for sharing all these great ideas. You know, it'll probably be like, it's definitely going to be like next year before I even get started on it. You know, maybe like March, April, maybe even before I even start this next game. But it's good to have these thoughts now and be kind of like, you know, marinating on it, letting it sit for a while, simmer, but this whole, all these ideas kind of just build up until it's all ready to be built. Yeah. Is Jai, I don't know, I don't think it is. So last I heard Jai, I would, man, I would love to make my next game in Jai, but I don't think it's going to happen. What the what I heard about Jai recently was that Jonathan Blow wants to he wants to ship an entire video game before he ships Jai, basically. So, he wants to finish this game he's working on right now that he's using Jai to create before he ever releases Jai. So, it's probably going to be a while. Yeah, yeah. The repetitiveness of procedural quests. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, just all, all you need is crafting. It's true, man, right? There's some, there's some, been some huge titles lately with crafting in them. Starbound is one of them, right? 
what is it? Am I thinking of Star Brown? What's the game that got like freaking seven million? It sold seven million sales. Was it Terraria? I think it was both Terraria and Starbound did really well. And of course, Stardew Valley. All games that have crafting. All incredible successes financially. I would love to have a, a, an, an incredible financial success with one of my games. But I think that's how it works, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not just going to have a freaking incredible success your first try. And maybe it takes you, some, you know, I'm sure it takes people sometimes 10 tries before they get a game that's really successful. Some people, maybe it's their first try. Some people, maybe it's their third try. But it's like, not every game, you know what I mean? Not every green game is going to make you rich. Or, or make you able to live the dreams that you want to live. Like, for example, I would love to start a studio at some day. Yeah, it was. Resource management? This is an idea. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Energy per day or or maybe he uses resources in some unique way. Maybe that's Yeah, that's something to think about. And that too. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot from every game you make. Totally. I've learned a lot from making Songbringer. Even even about little things like how what kind of time I spent on certain things, you know what I mean? Like I'd say I pers I spent at least 60% of my development time, if not 70 or 80% of my development time on programming, which a lot of it was procedural stuff, you know, and fixing bugs about procedural stuff. Right? Yeah, I re I'm really looking forward to watching this talk. He was trying for 11 years. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's a... This is a really important lesson to learn, you know? You gotta, like... I guess I'm learning that... I, I guess I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that, like, that Songbringer is this much of a success, you know what I mean? My last game was a complete flop. It was the game before that a flop too? I don't know. But anyways, my last game was a complete flop. Two years and oh, I ran up all his credit card debt. But this situation is a lot different. Songbringer paid for itself. You know what I mean? It had a successful Kickstarter. It got tons of press. It's built up a, a, a fan base, you know, a following for this kind of game. Um, there's a lot of success behind Songbringer. <laughs> well, my game was. <laughs> so, oh, here's this bit where it it places an enemy from off screen. Let's get into this debug in here and see what it's doing when it's when it after a certain timer it then places the enemy. Yeah, totally, right? Eleven years. Yeah, totally. I I agree. I agree. This is the beginning of something great and um I'm really, I'm really humbled and excited and just grateful that it's, you know, that it is what it is. I'm, I'm excited to be on the path. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a journey. It really is. You got it. You make one game. It's not the end. It's the beginning, really. Even your flops. Even if you're making games now and you've had a flop too. Damn, I know how you feel. I've, I've been there. And that flop, as long as you learn from it. It is a success in a way. You know what I mean? It's a success if you turn it into a learning experience. And that's how I had to look at it. And I believe that if you if you look at your failures as failures, then you won't move on. But if you look at your failures as an opportunity to learn, then you will move on. You'll you'll do something else. You'll make you will make improvements on the next one. Yeah, it's been two years, right? When we first met, you were 12 years old. Weren't you? 
You were 12, right? Or you're just turning 13? I don't know. Yeah, they do. They come from passion. You want to play it. And I think that's a great point to come from because if, if you don't do something you're passionate about, you're just going to burn out. It's not going to be a kind of game. Yeah, you got to think positive, right? Yes, and that's so true. Double Eleven is a relationship that I'm so thankful for. Yeah, yeah. This is this is this may be one of the best things that came out of Songbringer is just finding Double Eleven. They're amazing. They're so cool. Yeah, too. True. True. You're you're a baby rocket. <laughs> Uh, so this never happened. It never triggered this breakpoint. So that means that these guys either were not even being put into the mood off screen. Could be. It's probably this. Like, is it even getting there? Yeah, so I was just basically, I was saying that kind of for people out there, anybody that's watching this on YouTube or maybe you're lurking on the stream or whatever and you've you've had, you know, setbacks and fail, things that you might consider failures and things like that. Just, you know, take the time to learn from them. That's all. Give yourself, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and just learn. See, see what you previously thought was a failure and see it as that stepping stone, a success, as an actual success. There really is, if you think about it that way, there really is no such thing as failure. You, you probably never would have left Game Maker. Yeah, man, good for you. Hey, you last I heard you were learning, you were learning C, right? What are you what are you learning now? What you what you coding in, Rocket Bunny? So it didn't get there either. Oh, it might not have allowed full entrance B. Set a breakpoint there. Oh. Okay, if I go off the screen, come back. It's, oh, it still didn't hit this break point. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, cool, C in JavaScript. Yeah, Node is cool for 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 web stuff, for sure. Okay, so this needs to be if area pause is Z is zero, or um, pattern is K pattern zero ship interior two. So that should allow this faux entrance B pattern to work so that these foes come in from off the screen. There we go, cool. Nice. So yeah, this is something where we can kind of like set this up so it's a wave of enemies. Okay, so now we can turn off the zoom out. And 
Let's see if we can just overload this with enemies now. Like, what if we had 200 blobs? Would it actually create that many? Definitely not coming on the screen fast enough. Well, I mean, if there were harder enemies, I guess they'd be coming up on the screen just about right. Yeah, this is kind of like a survival challenge type thing, yeah. Yeah, C++ was a wall for you at the time. Yeah. Nice. So that's cool. You re kind of recreated that structure. Oh, okay. Okay. I hear you. That might be just your thing. You know, you're a, you're a pipeline and engine programmer, and that's your, your jam. You know, that's your passion. <laughs> there should be a day counter for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I agree. Unity is a pretty great, it's a it's a great engine. And it's C Sharp's a great language to learn too. It's really, it's, I mean, it's a great path to take as a game developer. I, I can't, I can't really think of many flaws to learning Unity. No matter what, you're gonna learn something and you can make great games with it. You can even write optimal games too. I mean, a lot of people don't write optimal games. They're, you know, they kind of use resources a lot. But there's ways to make your Unity game use less resources and be a, be a lot friendlier of a game on CPUs and GPUs. Okay, so this does seem to be happening uh, as as it should, right? There's just enemies constantly coming on the screen. I wonder if I can get out of this room. Oh, you can leave the room. Okay, I want this room to be locked. Oh, now it's got like a whole bunch of enemies just piled up because we left the room. Okay, so it needs to lock the room. Yeah, you wish you had more time. I hear you, man, I hear you. Gosh, this is great. Okay, so the goal for today's stream has basically been accomplished. I just wanted to see a room with that's like underground or in a level or dungeon or whatever, kind of. They had tons of enemies coming on the screen. That's really, this is all there, all there is in this, but... People say you need to eat. You wonder why? Yeah, right. You're like, stop working! Eat something, your skin and bones. So this room needs to be locked. Let's do set flags. Locked. Eating's for noobs. Right? Your team is huge on getting things as tight. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good, man, good. It's more about paying for the food. Fighter Kid, you, you live in uh, uh, Brazil, right? Is food expensive there? So let's try it with locked. How, how do you like living in Brazil, man? What's it like for you? If we had some other enemies here, this would probably be cool too. Like maybe not 200 blobs, but like 20. Oh, not really?
Okay, good. This time I can't walk out of the room. It would be better if there were some doors, but oh, that prevents the enemies from walking on screen too. Okay. So there needs to be a better way for the enemies or to lock the doors. Shoot, I don't know how to do this. Right? Yeah. That's true. You don't. Ah, that's a good point. That's a lot to be thankful for right there. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. In the States, we have a lot of crime, too, but it's mostly contained to certain areas, you know? Oh, you have super high taxes? Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Counter for the amount of days since Xcode was open. Okay, so this lock flag is not going to work yet. Let's see what this is like fighting these three types of enemies. Let's see if I can last through this. I think, well, the enemy should come on the screen faster, actually. Oh, hey, they're all coming on at once. This is definitely more interesting. Good, this is basically what I wanted to experiment with. Like, what's it like to fight a wave of enemies like this? Really, mechanically, it needs some way to, to lock the edge so, the, so that you're, you can't walk off, but the enemies can walk on. So that's just, that's a pretty simple thing. Figure that out. But what is it like if I did just stay on one screen? This like charge attack is super sweet. It really, it's like a bomb almost. Yeah, justice is a joke. Damn. Oh yeah, let's throw some bombs. I love throwing bombs too, man. Boom! Okay, there's a wave of like... That was a pretty easy wave. Okay. Well, with my current arsenal, it's an easy wave. So... That's good to know that like 20 blobs, 20 drops, 20 raws, they, they blended together as they came on the screen. So that was good. And this, this was like a pretty easy amount of enemies. Let's see what it's like to fight three times as many enemies. Maybe some other kinds too. It's easy in COD mode, right? I know, all my debug stuff is super, makes things pretty easy sometimes. We need like a synth, but not, not like 60 of them, maybe like 10. Um, what's another good enemy to throw on here? Maybe like a Jiter Fire. These guys are kind of a totally different movement pattern. That adds some, something interesting, I'm sure. Maybe I'll do a new type of enemy, too. Like, I know I want to do at least one new boss for this, but maybe one new type of enemy would be fun, too. Jib's got his work cut out for him on this one. So I wonder if I wonder if there really should be any health, because like I'm getting a lot of health from health drops here. And the whole point is to kind of survive this wave. So 
so maybe there shouldn't be any any health drops. Despite having so many enemies, it's really not as crowded as some of the rooms in Songbringer are. Some of, some of them are just packed to the gills with enemies, which is the whole point. You're supposed to get lost in the the feeling the feeling of being overwhelmed. That's what you're supposed to feel. And you're supposed to feel like you lost the character. Like, where's my hero? I have no idea. I'm fighting blind. That's the point. You're supposed to feel like you're fighting blind. Good. Okay, so with 60 enemies each, these I'm still fighting a bunch here. And I guess if Jib... If Jib wasn't scanning fast enough here, this would definitely be... You know, like he's... I guess he's catching up. He's keeping up with it. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like a fun thing to try, Rocket Bunny. You might as well, right? And you drop equipment while fighting? Interesting. What do you mean, like you, you would drop like certain items that you have? Like, whoops, I dropped my, uh, I dropped my top hat. Yeah, so this it makes it really easy with Jib scanning items. So maybe, in fact, yeah, I think the first thing to do here is to make it so enemies don't ever drop items for this particular room here. Nice, man, it works well with Unity too. Oh, I get it. Oh, okay, Biter Kid. That's that's interesting. I like that. So you would start with nothing in that mode, and then it would so be kind of like a whole different game mode. I hear you. Well, the con the concept I'm kind of going for here is where you you actually will pl be playing your your certain world C, and you'll find this cave, and then this cave there's sort of just like that mode. But maybe maybe like you could start with nothing. That's a cool way to do it, right? You would start with nothing and then you kind of like gain all your items back as you fight through the mode. That's a really interesting idea. Yeah, you're gonna move out of the country? Nice. Oh yeah. I would encourage that, Gully. I definitely would. There's a lot of ways to work on the road these days too, like with how ubiquitous the internet is in pretty much every country, even like third world countries now, you can still get decent internet. You know what I mean? As long as you're in, in cities, working from co-working spaces is a great way to, you know what I mean? Like if you, if you know you can afford rent somewhere, you can go rent something and work at a co-working space if you're, you know, if you feel like being around other people working and stuff and that's, I highly encourage that, yeah. To to go out, to explore, to grow, to to find what you're looking for, to discover stuff, you know. Yeah, there's a whole thing now. It's like there's actually a whole scene. It's called digital nomads. You can look that up. If you just put in the word, word digital nomad on YouTube or anything, you'll see there's like, there's a whole scene of people that basically just pack their, all they do is pack their, their life into a backpack and their work. So they bring their laptop, you know what I mean? They have clients already, maybe they're working for, or they have a job that they can do remotely, or they have their own online business basically that makes them income. They just put everything they need in a backpack, including their laptop, external keyboard, whatever you need to do to work, and you just go around the world. In general, those people kind of like will 
typically stay in a place for a little while, like maybe two weeks or a month, you know, and then move on to the next place, try something else. Bloody Palace, yeah, arena mode. Nice, man, yeah. That's kind of what this is. Yeah, it's kind of like just a wave type thing. And that too, yeah, if you got clients, you can travel, go work for that client, tr you know, find another client maybe, work for that client, travel more. See, <laughs> here, it's here someone who brought their laptop. <laughs> oh, I, oh man, I, I hear you. There's places like that in the world. There really is. But it, um, usually usually the co-working spaces, though, that you're going to go to are like a little bit... Sometimes they'll have security. You know what I mean? Like I've I've watched a few videos here and there from people that are digital nomads and they'll... Sometimes they're in a in a place like that and they'll, they'll have to like, you know, use a key card to get into the co-working space. So they, they're, their laptop's pretty much kind of secure while they're working. And also you can put a little lock on your laptop. That's a, that's a good thing to do anyway. You know, if you're going to travel with your laptop, you should probably have at least some kind of lock so you can lock it in place if you're going to go to the bathroom or whatever. Hmm. What else do I want to do on this stream? I mean, I kind of tried this out the way this is, I like this. This is a good beginning, you know? It's a good start. It would have to be, you know, there'd be different types of waves of enemies. There would be that locking mechanism. Dance. Just dance. That's all it's left to do. Dance. Oh, yeah. I feel like, I feel like strong bad. Hey, you go everybody. Man, I have a pretty bad strong bad voice. Sorry, I won't do that again. <laughs> I'm, I'm disgracing the name St strong bad. Well, I, I guess that's it. That's that's it for this stream. Yeah. Let's take this one last look at what I what the code was done today. Add a little faux pattern. Entrance style allows different enemies. Freestyle, get down. Japanese style dance. Ooh, ah, dance, dance, dance. Ooh, ah, Japanese style. Right, hooking up these different patterns for these different zero ship interior areas where this was. Yeah, this is all, that's all, that's all she wrote for today's stream. It did. I haven't even started watching it yet. Yeah, thanks, Raga Bunny. Pickle Rick. Let's get Swifty. Lol. Well, hey, thanks for watching, you guys. Survival Mobile. <laughs> you have to survive being mobile. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for all the thoughts, too, about next game and stuff. <laughs> Do with that pickle now. <laughs> uh, well, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your, your camaraderie and your friendship. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Yeah, we'll see you all next time.